Lions TV, this is your post-match analysis video for yesterday's 1-0 home win on the opening day of the season over Preston North End. The atmosphere was absolutely sensational yesterday. There was a real feel-good factor around the day and well done to the team and the manager. That is not easy to pull off with the amount of new signings that we did have. Let's start out by taking a look at the 11 that Neil Harris picked to start the match. In goal, it was Frankie Fielding. At right back, Marlon Romeo. Left back was Murray Wallace. Central defence was Jake Cooper with Alex Pierce wearing the armband alongside him. Right midfield was Jed Villar. Left midfield was Conor Mahoney. Central midfield was the Juan Williams and Ben Thompson. And up front, it was the onion bag, Aidan O'Brien and the big man, Matt Smith. Was that the 11 that I would have picked? No, but it's a good job he didn't listen to me because Jeb Wallace got the winner. Was that the 11 that I predicted Neil Harris would pick? I was one out. I was only one out and I predicted that he put in Leonard instead of Williams and I'm glad he did it because I thought Sean Williams played very well. As I said, the, the Dem was rocking yesterday. For, the, for all the bad feeling there was last season, that seems to have been put to bed now and, and we, we start fresh. And if you compare yesterday's game to, I know it's the first game of the season and there will be a little bit of a buzz. But compare that to the last home game of the season against Bristol City, it was, it was worlds apart. You could just tell that everyone felt positive and everyone felt pleased with, it, with the effort that the club and the manager put in to recruit players. And let's have it right, okay, even if he hasn't actually got the right players, you, he won't have signed as many players as he had and they'll all turn out brilliant signings. It just won't work like that. But he stuck to what he promised. He had the clear out and whether he got all the right players in or not, only time will tell. But as I said, even if you got five of those seven good signings, you, you'll take that all day long, or eight, whatever it was in the end. But he was still true to his word. He still did what he said he was going to do, and that was have a mass clear out and rejuvenate. And I think that transferred to not only the players, but you could feel it all around the ground yesterday. It was a very, very good atmosphere. You've seen Preston's fans tweeting about it online, saying that um, the moo at the beginning of the game and, and all through the game is like the sound you expect to hear when you get to the gates of hell. And that's exactly what we want. As we say time and time again, this ground has to be our fortress. We need to make the den count. And yesterday we absolutely did that. We started out like a house on fire. Aiden O'Brien does well. He cuts the ball back and there wasn't anyone uh, following up. The pressing defender has probably a bit more time than he realises, but he clears it for a corner. From the resulting corner from Mahoney, I think it was, or it could have been Williams. They were sort of alternating yesterday, taking turns with the set pieces. Mahoney's got more of a whip which is fine, but I love Sean Williams' floater because the Williams Sean Goater, it comes in and it's perfect for Juicy Jake up from the back. But um, on this occasion, it gets cleared out to the edge of the box. Jeb Wallace hits a lovely shot on his right foot and it's tipped over by the Preston goalkeeper. We had, we had the better of the opening exchanges. I would say the only spell Preston really had, they keep the ball well. They keep the ball a lot. And as we all know by now, that's not our game. We don't keep the ball you know, a great deal. We're sort of impact. Up, bang, crash, bang, wallop, try and create chances. And it does work for us when we got the right players. Preston kept the ball well. And they beat us 3-1 towards the back end of last season. If you remember, they absolutely took us apart. And yes, we had Jordan Archer in goal. And yes, we had James Meredith at left back that day. But the way they attacked that day, they was on form at the time. They was flying towards the playoffs. And they looked good. They did put little balls in behind the centre arse. But what they also did was they switched long diags. And then after we had a good start, obviously, for the next 20 or so minutes, I would say between the 20th and the 40th minute, they switched those long diags and they started to get on top. But as a back four, we know that Neil Harris, and we've seen it for a couple of seasons, doesn't like his fullbacks to go out and try and, and, try and um, stop the winger. He just says, stay compact and let them do what they've got to do. But we learned from last season, so hats off to the gaffer and hats off to the fullbacks. It wasn't easy for Marlon. I think he had a great game. But he got out wide and it was never going to be easy for him. Murray Wallace was man of the match yesterday. I said it all the way through to Mini Me and I'm glad that others picked up on it as well. Because what Mike Murray Wallace was doing, he wasn't, he wasn't allowing the crossfield ball. The second he left the left back, coming across to the right winger, Murray Wallace was off, he was out. And he, he, was, on, he was on the winger's first touch. And as, uh, as the Chipmeister General very correctly said in his post-match fan camp, in the end, the winger didn't really want to know. Murray Wallace was brilliant yesterday. Um, so listen, that's, that sort of got us up to the point of 40 minutes. We score around 35, 40 minutes. I can't remember exactly, to be honest. I think it was about 35th minute. Mahoney gives us and shows us all exactly what we haven't had. A player that will, you know, Fergie's always had a nice delivery, but Fergie would run down to the byline, cut back, cut back three yards, cut back again to the byline, and just try and nick that yard to get that cross in. Mahoney's got tricks. He's doing step overs. He's rolling the foot over the ball, and he puts in an inch perfect cross for Jeb Wallace. Who, in real time, I thought would hit a fantastic volley. But watching it back on the slow-mo that the club have posted this morning, 
on their Twitter feed and Instagram. It was um, it didn't catch it fantastic, Jed, and I would be a little bit disappointed if our keeper would have let that in. But uh, uh, listen, take nothing away from him. I've been critical of Jed, and I say I, I don't like to do it because. I can see how much he loved the club at full time. You can see him giving it this one to the fans. But Jeb Wallace, as much as I've criticised his performances last 10 games of last season, and again, really yesterday, he wasn't fantastic other than the goal. But that doesn't matter. That's enough. He's worth keeping on the pitch, even if he isn't at his best, because he can pull out moments of, not moments, I said moments of brilliance in real time, but reflecting on the goal yesterday, you know, moments that can, can dig us out, can get us and win us a game. And that's exactly what he's done. On his weak foot, he's had the confidence to, to hit the ball, a suit of chance has gone in. So, 1 0 to us. We're heading towards half time. Everything's looking fantastic. And then, of course, the old Millwall curse kicks in, and Frank Fielding pulls his groin, I think, by the look of it, taking a goal kick, which then brings Bolkowski off the bench for his debut. Luckily, Bolkowski didn't have to literally touch the ball. I don't think he touched the ball in play with his hands for the whole of the second half. I don't think he did. I think he kicks it a couple of times. But that's, again, that's testament to us. A lot of people moaning yesterday still. So it wasn't a great performance, blah, blah, blah. But as one of my mates very rightly said to me, they haven't had a shot on goal, other than the one that Matt Smith, by the way, headed over the bar. And I'll get on to Matt Smith in a minute. Um, so we, we've done something right. But yeah, the goalkeeper curse just strikes again. Dave Martin fucks off to the enemy. Jordan Archer's an absolute clown. And um, Ben Amos was on loan, got injured, didn't really play off for us. Then we went to get Bolkowski in pre-season. It took forever him to come. Then he didn't come because his knees were apparently falling off. We get in Frank Fielding, who plays the whole of pre-season, does very, very well. And then he does that in the first game and pulls his groin. So we're going to need another goalkeeper in now because Sanford or Sanford will have to be the understudy. I can see it being sort of a... I'm hoping it's not too long-term, but it didn't look good, did it, when Fielding pulled his groin and thoughts go out to... Um, I was going to say Big Frank, but he's not really that big. So we come out of the second half and we had a good go. We peppered him. First 20 minutes, second half... We peppered them. Ref, absolute joke. A blatant penalty we should have had, as I'm going to show you there on the screen now that uh, my spies were out in the uh, West Lower. Someone sent me that photo last night. I think it's Mill HDI on Instagram. So thanks for sending that little photo out to me, mate. Blatant penalty. And, and the lino was on that side as well. It was over on the side of the left back. So should have been a blank penalty. We didn't get it. Um, fella puts an elbow in on Matt Smith. Should have been sent off. Wasn't. Then one of their players gets booked. I think he brings down Jed for a high tackle. Two minutes later, the same player does it again. Maybe on Marlon this time. I'm not sure who, but uh, I, had I had phone coming out of my mouth and the spitting feathers as, as many were around me. Should have been off, but the, the refs fucking melted and, and, and didn't send him off. I don't know why, because with 15,000 angry South Londoners on your back, it would be the perfect time to melt and just do what they want. But it didn't happen. They didn't get to send it off, and then you get the sense that Preston are going to come back into the game. We saw the game out well. Neil Harris brings on Ryan Leonard for, for uh, Sean Williams. About 20 minutes to go, and I tweeted and said I thought it was early. Thought Leonard done fine when he came on. Didn't have a problem with him. He works hard. He always works hard. I do give him that. But even at his fastest, he just doesn't look that pacey. But he was tracking goalkeepers down, and he's fighting for his place. So it was all good. It was good to see the Bradshaw come on. He gives us something I don't think uh, Matt Smith does. He gives us a lot of pace. Let's get on to Matt Smith. Now, I was critical of Matt Smith. I have been critical of Matt Smith in pre-season. I'm telling you now... He won a header when he hit it over the bar and saved. That was as good as a goal. So I'll give that one to Matt Smith. That was as good as a goal. And I'm not slagging him off because I felt he grew into the game and I felt he got a lot better. And he, 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 does, he does remind me of a better version of Tom Elliott. He isn't fantastic, but he causes problems. And he works hard just out there by himself. Don't get me wrong. But I'm telling you now, people have dug me out for this on other things. He did not win a header going forward offensively, a flick on, until the 55th minute. I can guarantee you it. I'll put money on it if you want to get the footage from somewhere, I'll sit and watch it with you. And if he wins a head, I'll flick on before the 55th minute, then I'll happily hold my hands out. But I'm telling you now, it didn't happen. But despite that, from the 55th minute onwards, I felt he grew into the game. I, thought, I felt he improved. I felt Aiden O'Brien had a very good game yesterday. It was a 4-4, 1-1. Aiden played just off Matt Smith, and he, he played very well, Aiden. I think I would rather play Aiden with Bradshaw in front of him. We definitely need some pace up there. We definitely need some pace. And I know that doesn't give us a target, man. But I think that we've proved in the last year that we've played better without a target man. we played better with a 4-4-1-1. We did it with Gregory. Gregory wasn't a target man. And we, we got results. We got results at Middlesbrough. We got results at Derby. We got results uh, another away game that I can't remember where it was. But we got results when we needed them towards the back of the last season. It was Birmingham. With one up front and no target man. We don't knock the long diag when we haven't got a target man. So stick Bradshaw up there for pace. Because he's the most like for like you're going to find for Gregory. And he's fucking lightning quick. And have Aiden playing just behind him. Then we can use our wingers. That's when you'll start seeing Mahoney and Jed having to get crosses in more. 
So for me, uh, that's the two I'll go with up front. I'll go with Aiden and I'll go with Tom Bradshaw. Let's just go through the team quickly. Filled in, I felt done absolutely nothing wrong and didn't have a lot to do until he got taken off injured and Bolkowski. Uh, they know they, they played well in my opinion. Marlon Romeo got caught on the ball a couple of times and he did very in a very Millwall way recover and win it back, but he struggles defensively, Marlon. As much as I love him, it hurts me to say that. But he, he's, his defensive work does need, does need work. But listen, he's still young and he's got time to learn. Left back Murray Wallace was my man of the match. The two centre halves, Jake Cooper was superb yesterday. Alex Pierce wasn't so good. And again, I'll say it, I think Sean Hutchinson's a better player. Alex Pierce looks a bit flat footed at times, a bit slow. Um, but listen, I'm hearing Alfie said after the game that he was very vocal and very and organised that back four brilliantly. So, you know, again, didn't think he had a bad game, but I thought he, he looked a little bit cool on the ball, looked a little bit unfit, and I think Hutchinson's the better option. Right midfield, Jed got the winner. I ain't gonna say no more than that. End of story. Conor Mahoney looks a level above what we've got. And we'll do well to keep hold of him. Central midfield, Ben Thompson grew into the game. Uh, I think we're expecting a bit too much from Tom O'Neill at times, but we ain't going to get that every game. But he still battled, winning tackles in the 92nd minute out of the touchline. And with a big smile on his face after he does it, he's everything the Millwall epitomises. Sean Williams alongside of him. Now, I get very, a lot of criticism for backing Sean Williams. Sean Williams is a Millwall player, been a Millwall player for a long time, knows the team, knows the club inside out, knows what the manager expects from him. Willow is getting older, I understand he might start slowing down, but with him and Ben Thompson, he's the better option. Billy Mitchell, great young player, not ready for, to be a starter in the first team yet. Jason Malumbi is not fit yet and could possibly be a potential replacement for him. And Ryan Leonard isn't as good as Sean Williams. Sean Williams yesterday gave the ball away twice in the whole game. I know now I've got to watch what I say and, and, and analyse it in great depth. And I didn't get my phone out of the pocket once yesterday until the full-time reaction, I don't think, uh, maybe for a couple of tweaks here and there. But I really, really try to watch the players, especially the ones that I criticise or get criticised for back in. And Sean Williams was very Dennis Wise-esque, Neil Harris-esque. We're one new up, we're trying to buy a bit of time, we're trying to kill the tempo of the game. He's leaning in and using his experience to, to work his body into positions where he's getting brought down for fouls, killing the game dead. He chased an attacker back to our goal line and he won a goal kick for us and ended up nearly in the away stand um, on the bottom tier. He works very hard for the team. He does look like Aidan O'Brien. He looks very um, very deliberate, very slow, very out of breath. They just both look like that, but it doesn't mean that they are. It's just the way that Sean William comes across. And then if we've got five million to spend on a central midfielder, I'll happily replace Williams. But until that day comes, for me, Willow and Tomo is the absolute best we can hope for in the centre of our midfield. So there you go, we win the game. And as I said, that's off to the manager because it is not easy bringing in all those new players and getting them to gel quickly. It could have been a couple of months, and if we did lose four or five straight off, it would have been uh, a good out for Neil Harris to say we need time to gel, but it looks like they've got it together quickly. All the new players, I said in my full-time reaction yesterday, have come in and have invested and bought into the Millwall way. A lot of players change, a lot of um, clientele have changed, but the Millwall way remains the same. Fight for each other on the pitch, togetherness. You see all the players yesterday, especially the new ones, tweeting and saying, what an atmosphere, which I've covered. You know, I'm hoping, again, that G's them up more. Just finally, before I wrap up, there was no gold music yesterday. I don't know who noticed it. Eight Days Very Funny texts me and says, uh, no gold music, sounds a lot better, but no one knew what to do. And we, we scored, we jumped up. Where there was no goal music, at first I thought we'd be disallowed. Then no one really knew what to do. We were sort of waiting for the goal music to kick in. But the club have got rid of the goal music by the sound of it. Maybe it's the start of this new generation under Husky. Who knows? They was flinging chocolate milkshakes around left, right and centre yesterday. And uh, that's probably maybe why the uh, atmosphere was added to as well. A few people were high on sugar instead of a few other things for a change. But yeah, no goal music. I thought I'd mention it. I don't really care either way. As long as the goals go in, then uh, it's all good to me. There is a hell of a lot of content up on our YouTube channel right now. The Docs of the Den documentary, which took me 12 weeks to film, um, has had over 15,000 views so far. So if you don't mind checking that one out, I'd appreciate it. A lot of fan cams, full-time reactions, pre-match predictions. Go on there, Sue got it right. Did you get it right? Let me know if you did in the comments below. <sighs> Finally, I can have a few days off. All that's left for me to say is we will be back on Thursday for our pre-match prediction for West Brom. I'm going to try and get a Lions lounge in between then because I'm just an absolute machine these days. Not physically, just for YouTube. Hope you enjoyed the show, boys and girls. As always, please subscribe to Lions TV. Come on, you Lions.